Unfortunately, in school, tests are a necessary evil. We can't escape them. We can't get away from them. We have to take them. Um, and they come with a variety of different pressures. Um, whether it's a final exam, a midterm, a quiz, um, if our entire program is riding on it, tests come with a lot of anxiety. So uh, I just wanted to try and give you some ideas of how to deal with this anxiety. The truth of the matter is that anybody and everybody uh, experiences some kind of anxiety when it comes to a test. It just depends on how much you let it uh, take over. I really don't know why my thing's not going away. Please hold a moment. I want my toolbar to go away. There we go. Says that, eh? Okay, so anyway, um, it, it depends on how much you let the anxiety overtake you. Um, so if you're bottom left, if or if you are to the right, uh, we got a problem. Um, usually anxiety comes with sweats, comes with, uh, I usually joke around and call them poo pains, but... You know when you have that stomach ache. Some people end up with uh, intestinal issues. Um, some people, get the anxiety is so bad they can't even concentrate at all. And their mind is thinking of every little thing that has nothing to do with the test just to overwhelm them even more. So the more that you let the anxiety take over, the more it's going to affect not only your body, but it's going to affect your performance and your test score. So here are some ways to deal with that. Um, as far as physical symptoms about test anxiety, um, you know, again, you could have butterflies in your stomach. You can be sweating, nauseous. Uh, you could have the poops. You could have sweaty palms. Uh, you can't concentrate. Or you walk into the test and you knew everything five minutes ago, but you don't know it now. Um, millions and millions and millions of people have test anxiety around the world. Everybody does. Everybody has a uh, piece of it. Again, it just depends on how much it overtakes you. So... The more certain you are that you know the material, the less you experience test anxiety. So if you've already watched the video on test taking tips, I talked about self-fulfilling prophecies and being proud of what you do know and focusing on what you know as opposed to what you don't. That will help ease the anxiety. Also, if you start with the part of the test that you're good at, um, and you start to build that confidence that will also ease the anxiety that you have. Uh, so this is not how to handle your test-taking anxiety. But I did think it was pretty funny. So, uh, when someone has anxiety, it's usually all that they think about. And if you look at the chart down at the bottom that I had found... I know it's a little hard to see, but what the test, what the, the graph is showing is that the higher the anxiety, the lower the test scores. Um, so they examined three different tests. Um, the white bar uh, is a test score with someone who had low test anxiety. Uh, the yellow is someone who had average anxiety. And then red is someone who had extreme anxiety. And in each of those scenarios, the red is the lower one. So, again, it's harder for you to access the information that you already know if the anxiety is all that you're thinking about. Um, and a lot of the times when you're so anxious, it makes you frustrated. And when you mix those two emotions together, you can't focus and you blank out. But it's not just you. Like I said, everybody experiences some kind of anxiety. For some people, it's an awesome motivator. And for some people, it gets to a point where it can be crippling. Um, 
too much stress and too little stress uh, can be an issue sometimes. Sometimes if you're not stressed enough about a test, then you might not care about it. You might not care about the result. Um, and it might just show a lack of interest or passion for what you're doing. And again, too much anxiety can be paralyzing. Um, so you want to fall kind of right in the middle where that anxiety propels you to do better. And you get this mindset of, I know what I know, I'm proud of what I know, and I refuse to fail this test. Failing is not an option, so I have to kick its butt. And that's what I'm talking about with anxiety being a motivator. But it is a really a vicious cycle. Um, it's So when something is in a cycle, it's called cyclical. So if you already have anxiety, and then um, something happens, so let's say you have high anxiety, you take the test, you get a poor grade, now your anxiety is going to be higher and the next test you go into, all you're going to think of is the previous bad grade, which is going to make your test that much higher, or your anxiety that much higher, and your test grade lower. Um, so it, it happens a lot. You get anxiety, then you panic, then something bad happens, so you get even more anxious, then you panic even more. Um, to give you a personal example, uh, most of you who... It know me at right at this point in my life. Um, so it's November 2015. Um, in two weeks, I am taking a test for my doctorate. It is a four-day test, and the test will consist of, I don't know how many questions, but for each question, I have to write a 20-page paper as a response. And I have to use all of the textbooks from the first year of my program in the doctorate um, as citations to my answer. If I don't do well on the test, I don't get to redo it. I don't get any kind of assistance. I am immediately out of the program. So despite the fact that I'm more than halfway through my doctorate, despite the fact that I have a very good part of my dissertation written, if I fail this test, I'm out of the program, and there goes all the money I've spent and all the hard work that I've done. So to say that I'm anxious is an understatement. Um, I have been so anxious in the last couple weeks that uh, it's caused nosebleeds, that I've had headaches, that I've had a couple panic attacks, but I know that I work really well under pressure. So that I know that in the hotel room, as I'm waiting for that test to open, I'm going to stand in front of that mirror and give myself a pep talk because I refuse to let this one test ruin uh, a dream I've had for myself ever since I've been little. So that's how you kind of start to break that cycle. So a lot of the times sources come from other people, but most oftenly sources come sources of anxiety come from yourself, um, where um, you know you if you look down at the bottom at the picture with the green arrows and the red arrow, um, the green arrows that's that cyclical pattern of anxiety. Um, most often anxiety comes from the voice within our head saying. I'm too stupid, I can't handle this, I'm going to fail, I don't deserve this, this is going to be too hard, I've been out of school too, too long, um, I'm too young, or whatever. The red arrows show you different exit points of how to break that cycle and how to break that internal talk. Um, so I gave you an example um, of standing in front of that mirror and giving myself a pep talk because I refuse to let this one test ruin everything. So I'm going to stand in front of that mirror and tell myself I'm going to pass, and that's my self-fulfilling prophecy. Even if I don't completely believe it, I need to keep telling myself that, because the more that I do, the more it'll ease my anxiety, and it'll clear my brain to be able to think better and clearer to address whatever question is in front of me. Um, 
I am totally the black cartoon thing down in the bottom that says I've got 99 problems and 86 of them are completely made up scenarios in my head that I'm stressing about for absolutely no logical reason. <laughs> my father yells at me for this all the time. Yells in a nice way. Um, because I get anxious about the what ifs. Well, what if the hotel catches on fire when I check in for my test? What if the Wi-Fi doesn't work? What if the uh, power cord that I have has dies? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And when I go off on a what if tangent, that's when my anxiety spikes. And I have to get it back into control. And usually what I do is I use one of those red arrows, one of those exit points, where I talk to a friend um, and let them know that I'm feeling scared or that I need some help. So other causes of anxiety is associating your grade with your self-worth. So if you think that a 70 on a test defines who you are, that's going to increase your anxiety. Not having control over everything also causes anxiety. That one is me as well. Um, try the what ifs. So that anticipation of the what of the unknown that kind of goes along with the what if I was talking about. Having negative past experiences. So if you know that um, in a previous English class you didn't do well with papers, whether it was because of a teaching style or because you just weren't ready to learn at that point, you're gonna go into that English class with a lot of anxiety. Um, taking people's opinions and twisting them in a way that it, it, it's negative. So, for example, when I was little, I got a 99 on a spelling test, and my, I was so excited, and my, I was in, like, third grade, and my dad, I'm like, Dad, 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 look, I got a 99, I got a 99. And he said, oh, honey, did you study? I said, no, I didn't, because I was so proud of the fact that I was that smart, apparently, without having to study. And his response was, think of what you could have gotten if you studied. I always took that as a negative thing because it meant that I wasn't perfect. But what he was trying to instill in me is that I need to study and that I won't always be able to get good grades without studying. So because we had that miscommunication and I took it a different way, for a long time it created anxiety for myself. The thing is that anxiety is a learned behavior um, to an extent. Um, we can control a lot of the self-talk that happens, so we can also unlearn it, and we can control how we change how we talk to ourselves. So, um, to beat test anxiety, look at the test for what it is. If it's a quiz, fine. If it's a test, fine. If it's a paper, whatever. But it's really important to know overall what that one particular test is worth for the entire class. So most teachers will create um, a class where it looks like there's tons and tons and tons of work. But we do that so that if you fail something or you tank something, you can still pass the class. And think, worst case scenario, if you, if you show up for the test, then you're going to get more than a zero. But let's say you get a zero on the test. First of all, what are the odds that you're going to get every single question wrong? Slim to none. But let's say you get a zero on the test. Are you going to fail the class? What's the worst thing that can happen? And logic, really, think of that. What is the worst thing that can happen? Um... For you guys, if you get a zero on your test, yeah, it'll drop your average a little bit, but would you still pass? Probably. Could you ask for extra credit and hope the teacher says yes? Yeah. So those are ways to lower your anxiety. Putting so much stress on just that one test is going to increase your anxiety, sometimes to a level that you can't handle. So the stuff that's on this slide are things that we've talked about
both in this PowerPoint and in the test taking tips if you've already watched that video. If you haven't, you're going to hear me say these things again, so I'm not going to go through them. But you need to sleep. Um, you need to sleep because, and you need six consistent hours of sleep so that you reach that REM cycle where your brain converts short-term memory to long-term memory. You need to rest so that your body can heal itself, which includes your brain. And if you already know as much as you can possibly know, why are you going to keep yourself awake worrying about it? Because it's not going to change anything. It's not going to make things any better. Worrying is inaction. So worrying is basically sitting there not doing anything but panicking. So if you want to decrease your anxiety and your worry, do something about it. And resting is a good thing to do. Um, again, this was also in the test taking tips. Make sure that you ask the teacher questions to either explain a word or clarify what they mean by something. Uh, the worst thing that the teacher can do is say that they are they can't answer you because it might give the question away, but at least try and ask. We've talked about scrap paper as well. If you've already read uh, or paid attention, listen to the um, test-taking tips. Um, but let's say that your anxiety is so bad that you have a ton of stuff in your brain. Grab a piece of scrap paper and jot down everything that's on your mind even if it has nothing to do with the material. So the grocery list, the I'm going to fail, I'm not going to do well. Put everything down on that sheet of paper after the test is passed out. Because once it's out of your brain and it's on paper, you can't worry about it anymore because it's already out of your head. So it's a way to actually clear your head and let the information that you need move to the front of your brain so that you can take the test better. Uh, a lot of people, in addition to eating well and resting, um, find that exercise and eating healthy um, are ways to also help um, alleviate anxiety because exercise releases endorphins that tend to make you happier and help you relax. Though sometimes people then get anxiety about how they're going to manage to fit an exercise into their routine. But <laughs> I completely understand. You got to study. I mean, there's no two ways about it. If you are anxious about a test because you didn't prepare for it, then in that case, you kind of deserve the anxiety. Um, but you need to prepare. This chart shows you a great way to prepare each week, after the test, before the test. Um... And we're going to talk about studying and reading notebooks and textbooks and taking notes as well. So these are just some other ways to overcome anxiety um, that we have already talked about. Um, you also need to make yourself a safe place to land at home. So if you have a lot of anxiety, have that person you can go to to kind of like word vomit on them and you can just let everything out and they're your soft place to land and you know that they can hug you and they can talk you through it and make you smile and make you laugh. Um, this is just kind of a recap of all of the things that we just focused on. So when you get your test back, don't freak out over the grade and do not compare it to other people. Any improvement that you make is fantastic, even if it's by one point or by two points. Again, take notes on your mistakes and determine whether they're the, they are the kick yourself in the butt mistakes or the I don't know this material. And that is also in the test taking tips uh, lecture. <laughs> I would say we should try this in class, um, but I don't know if the janitorial staff would like us too much. But it might help to do at home, where you write down all the worries that you have on bright paper, and then you rip the paper to shreds, 
And once the test is over, now you have confetti to celebrate that the test is over and that you have no more anxiety because it's all out of your brain. Maybe we should try this once. <laughs> I hope that these tips have helped. Um, it's just going to take you a little while, and that's okay. <laughs>